what? Hey, what's up? It's me, G.I. Peaches. But y'all know me as the Project Barbie, a uh, Soldier Slim sister. And I got my little nephew with me. My little nephew with me. The Soldier Slim. And we are what? We just jumped off the porch. We just hopped off the porch, jumped off the porch, not on the porch, with Dirty Glove Bastards. When bad bitches link up, we drank a Casamigos out the bottle. Walk in the club, we looking like some models, so that ass he had to follow. All right, so we got G.I. Peaches. That is I. And my boy, Little Soldier Slim, off the porch with us today. I'm off the porch now, baby. <laughs> so oh, the welcome, porch. guys. What's poppin'? Yeah, so first off, how we feeling today? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. They're a little rude over here, but I'm having a good time. I'm still having a good time. To get away from New Orleans, sometimes it's great. Now, that's funny. Now, most of the people that come here and say, Oh, Atlanta show love. Atlanta's friendlier than whatever city I'm from. We get that southern. Know, I don't know. It must be me. They don't <laughs> like me. Every time I come here, I either get into it with somebody at the airport. I got into it with somebody at the hotel. By the way, ma'am, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find you, ma'am. But I get into it. I don't know. It's probably just me, though. You know, they say I'm confrontational, so it's probably just me. Yeah, it's, or they just know you from New Orleans, like. All right, let's try. That's what it is. <laughs> I, they heard it in my voice. They was like, yeah, she, she from New Orleans. She uptown New Orleans, too. They seen it. I know y'all saw it. Because, you know, the Saints and Falcons, they hate each other. That's what it is. Look, as soon as I went to the airport, I was like, that's, that's how they going to do. They going to they gonna, they gonna categorize us because we for the Saints. But every time, we going to beat y'all, do Straight up. Every time. Every time. Talk that shit. Uh, they know it's certified, certified talk. So what are we working on here in Atlanta besides being on off the porch? We got any other plans while we in the city? We, you know, been doing anything else? I, I'm, I'm interested in the food and the drinks. I'm interested. That's what I'm here for. So I'm taking a break from everything else right now while I'm in Atlanta because I don't okay. get to take a break in New Orleans. It's just work, work, work. Um, so I'm going to get the food. I want to see if y'all could compete with us, but I already know the answer. I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, New Orleans is world known no, for their food, the food, you know right? what I'm saying? Like, they got some good stuff in Atlanta, though. Of course, yeah. Yeah, they got some yeah, good food, some soul food, food? Yeah, Bits like they got some got good it. soul food. I'll give them that. Yeah. I like the soul food. Yeah. All right, so, you know, we know so the story, but we got to get to learn peaches here. So, you know, from New Orleans, uptown. I'm from New Orleans, uptown, Magnolia. Um, I, we, uh, what they be saying? I'm no longer from the Magnolia anymore. I'm just uptown now. Um, but I'm from Uptown. Uh, I grew up in the Third Ward, mostly around um, the projects, but then we moved over to like Miroish area, which is like right down the street. Um, and that's where I really come up from. So the DJs, the parties, I got to experience firsthand before it got crazy when people started bringing guns and killing oh, people wow. there. Yeah. So it was a good time when you could have went to a black party. Huh. And you would hear people on the mic like before they got to be big artists like they are now, like Chopper Styles and the people okay. of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. The good part, the good times in New Orleans <laughs> when good music was around. Yeah, I wanted to ask, what does New Orleans look like today in 2023 compared to when you was coming up there? So it's a little bit more for me mm -hmm. living here, living there th like 33 years. Um, a lot has changed now. Um, it's a lot of killing. It's a lot of, you know, crime all around the world is high, of course. But mm -hmm. in such a small place like New Orleans, um, the impact is more, you notice it more because we're such a small place. So just like our cousin, he was gunned down on yesterday and got killed on yesterday. Oh, wow. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really starting to affect your family more and more. And you see it closer in your backyard. Like, I think my window got broke like two times. Like, oh, really? so now I have to like park my car in like a vacant driveway. Oh, so shit. people would think that it's for the people that live there, like, because it's costing us, of course, a lot of money. Like, I don't know. I, I'm starting to think it's probably the people at the window places, but don't quote me on that because <laughs> they they, uh, that business, they're huh? the only one that's making money off of it. You know, we paying like six hundred dollars and y'all the only ones making money, but neither here nor there. <laughs> now, why do you think we hear about so much violence in New Orleans? We know it's small. But still, it, you know, there's a lot of crime. There's a lot of violence in the city. And it's been that way for a while, too. It has. Um, I think you hear about it more uh, probably because of the type of crimes and the ages that it's, it's, it's starting and it's varying. And um, we seen like a couple months ago, a lady, she was just sitting in her car. 
uh, the kids carjacked her and she was hanging from the seat belt and they dragged her. Oh, shit. Her arm was detached. She died. Wow. Um, so 14 years old, they should have been at school. Like, so we seeing it impact like the youth. Um, and I think, I mean, a lot of people have a lot of speculations and of course it's just a speculation when it comes to me as well. I think if kids had more things to do, um, they wouldn't so young get into the crime life because they would be doing other things. Yeah, like like after school programs or you know what I'm saying. When we were 16, we was going to our friends, you know, parties. Like mm -hmm. we was going to parties. We could have went to parties and you didn't have to worry about getting a shot. Mm -hmm. um, now you see, you know, they're trying to have little parties and they shooting up the whole party. Oh, it's yeah. like it's it's different. It's they can't enjoy life, and I it's crazy because it's like my little cousin. She's in the age frame of like 14 and. Mm -hmm. She wants to do all of these things that she should be able to do, but she can't do them because you, your parent has to protect you, of course. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't understand. Of course, they don't understand, but it's not how it was when we were coming up. Yeah. Uh -huh. and soldier. I think I think it's it's the one the woman household the the household it, young boy these kids daddy <laughs> you feel me and that's it. Yeah. Like fuck, that's what yeah, they like. They like a lot of the negative music, you know. They like a lot of, and it's not. Now it's like a lot of music is negative, you know. Usually you could get an outskirt, you might, you know, you go listen to J Cole, we could mm -hmm. go listen to Kendrick Lamar, we could go, but strictly for them and their age frame, you know, is mostly either like about these, drugs or guns. Yeah, and yeah. these kids don't know nothing. Like I know how to fish, you know. <laughs> I know I know how to hunt. You feel me, like. These kids could never tell you one time where they even just try to throw a fishing rod, hmm. you know? And we used to fish in the lake. Yeah. So it was, I don't know, it's just different. Yeah, it's like even the, the artists, the younger they are, they rap about guns, they rap about right. drugs and yeah, that's just, that's killings and shit. It's like, it's like I, saw, I saw a little boy, he looked like he was like 13, 14 years old. And everything was about a bag, designer, money and guns and i'm like it's so repetitive one and it's just it's so many other things that are going on in the world that i know should affect your age frame you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. we was 14 we was thinking about what clothes we want well my mama oh. don't want to get me a new phone you know yeah. but they got girls, bigger things to worry about you know just having a phone being able to talk to girls, girls that, right yeah that was a big thing. look i said the other day thing. i said remember when you had to wait till nine o'clock to get on the phone and on the weekends it was free at after nine and on the weekends <laughs> oh yeah like that, was, early, that was good early time. on i wasn't selling drugs we, i used to pick up cans hmm. you know what i'm saying yep I, and, and, you know, so now that you've lived in Atlanta and you live in Houston now, like, do you feel like New Orleans is that much different than these other cities? Or do you see the same shit going on in each different well, it's city? it's the same shit. Every, like, honestly, I, I left New Orleans and came to Atlanta and I'm like, you know, boom. I'm in Atlanta, I'm staying downtown. Man, they was breaking in cars every day on Peter Street. Every day I lived on Peter Street, they was breaking in cars still, and they was coming in the in the late in the gate where we park at. You know, the mm -hmm. people who stayed in Smith and Port are breaking in our cars. Hmm. Real talk. I was like, oh no, hmm. don't don't slip up and leave your gun in the car. It's over. Oh yeah, yeah. They oh, gonna yeah, go that's, use that's, that bitch. But I ain't gonna lie, I'm walking in and out. I'm getting all the code in my hand. Go out of my, you feel me? Like, man, yeah. uh, you gotta be on point. Nah, absolutely, yeah. Like my cousin who she was talking about got killed. Him and the dude died. So, you true. feel me? Like, type of time we on. I ain't, yeah. that's just what it is. What role do you guys feel like social media plays in all of this too? The largest. I feel like social media, like think about it. We was growing up, we had a little designer. We ain't have. We wasn't designer down every day. Yeah. We wasn't, you know, we didn't have that. Like, it wasn't that. I think it, it gives people, and, you know, like goals to attain that's not really their goals. Mm -hmm. I think people start to look at what they see online um, and try to imitate that art. And that it's they really see. not real gold. It's not. Oh, yeah. It's not living in the Airbnb. It's not real diamonds either. Yeah. Like, think yeah, about it. Not having change, being in the Airbnb, having designer down. You know, spent five thousand on your outfit. You know what I'm saying? Twenty, thirty thousand on jewelry. You in an Airbnb. You riding in a rented car vet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like real talk. It's all like, an image. Man, it's an I image. Had to, I really had to start changing my life. Like I was getting, I, I really caught myself going make money to 
fund my music career even more. You mm -hmm. feel me? And it was like, I'm, I'm just building it. it. Ain't nothing but an image. You feel me? When I could just do music and just do music, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, if they like you, they like you. You know. Nah, no, that's real. Yeah. yeah, if they fuck with you, they fuck with you. You know, if you got that or not. But it does. You know, it would progress you further if you had those things, because that's what that, they're looking to they look, attain. That's yeah. what they're looking for. Yeah. So, you know, it's crazy. But we all, you know, we spend lots of time on the phone. Most of our time is spent on the phone. I bought myself one of those little jails oh, <laughs> to really? lock mine up with a timer because I was spending so much time and I wasn't doing what I needed to do. I can't do that. My phone be ringing in the jail. <laughs> money on the phone, you missing money, how you do that? Well, I got to take that. I got to do what I got to do. Yeah. I put it on I Do Not Disturb, like, <laughs> yeah. 9 o'clock. I'm nine big on that. Over. When I leave here, yeah, I put it on Do Not Disturb. Yeah, like, you got to have a peace of mind, though, because we absolutely. spend, and you, like, you wouldn't even notice it. Like, you ever notice that? Like, you on your phone, you look up, it's about two hours later, three hours mm -hmm. later. Well, I stopped doing that. I stopped being on my, like, you know your phone tell you how much time you spend on it every week? Yeah. I don't spend more than five hours on my phone a week. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Real talk. I think I'm spending like 14. I'm up there, up there. Hmm. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's yeah. bad. Don't try that at home, kid. <laughs> so, Peaches, give us a perspective of growing up in, you know, in the projects as a female. You know what I'm saying? So, it's different when... <laughs> Like who I'm come under, like so by my brother being soldier slim, mm -hmm. you know they really, really, really protect you. They really, really, really keep you close. So I was really sheltered from most of the things that were going on during that time by me being my brother's sister. Like people didn't want me to know that that was that part of the world. Huh. They have people that really, you know, they don't care if you're a child. They don't care what they need when they won't do what they won't do. It is what it is. If you're in the way, you could get knocked off. Mm -hmm. So I really was mostly sheltered from it um, for the most part. And uh, when we got to move and got to actually live in the house where they had a backyard, um, that's what me and I think my brother, we have, like, that's my most memories with him. Uh -huh. Yeah, so when we was at that point, like, that's when he would teach you how to, uh, the La Sega Genesis cultures, he would teach you how to blow in it, <laughs> put it in the freezer with the ice and chop okay, it up yeah. and put it back in there. So he was really like, a, like when people be like, oh my God, there's so much, such a difference in age. Um, but he was really, that's my big brother. He, yeah. when I, he, I was, when he, I came into the world, he was already 13. Mm -hmm. He was already a teenager. So he would always just keep me around his neck, keep me in the house, run with me in the house. Like he was really, really, really a great brother. Great, great, great brother that didn't mind his sister being around. Yeah. Like a real protector. Like a real protector. So yeah. I know at this point in life, he would be really, really proud of me and who, you know, I've come to be. Especially when it comes to him. Absolutely. Don't play with my brother. No, I think they, I think don't everybody play. knows that. Don't Anyone that follows you on social media, though, <laughs> don't, don't play, play with my brother. <laughs> Do not. So when would you say you jumped off the porch? How old were you then? I would say I, I, put a, I went to Catholic school and everything. So I think I, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm jumped off the porch by now and graduated from college and everything. I think I'm still on the porch. <laughs> you know, I think I don't even think I've crossed over yet. I think I'm on. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stay on the porch. You know, they say if you can't handle the heat, don't go in the kitchen. True I'm going to go ahead and stay on the porch. I'm, I'm going to be a school girl and take care of the, 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 the business part of it. Yeah. So where did you go to college at? I went to Southern University at New Orleans. Okay. Yeah, I have a bachelor's in uh, business. Oh, nice. Yeah. How would you describe your college experience then? Considering you were still at home pretty much. Right, because, you know, that's right. I lived like probably like 10 minutes from the college. <laughs> 10 minutes. Um, I would say my college career, you meet some of the greatest people that you'll ever meet in life. Some of the most memorable people. People say high school, but no, it's like college. You, you, you might run across those people from college like five, six times in a year. Hmm. And they're still some of the greatest people. And they're making so much progress in life that you're able to be inspired by them. Yeah. So, like, I, I think for me, college was that place that I met a lot of people who I really think impact my life the most. Yeah. And then I found out who I was because I had more freedom for me. No, so that's real. Yeah. I could go back. I'll go back. I'll go back and get a master's. Yeah, definitely. Like, going to college is such good for networking because you're going to meet people from all around the world, too. See, that's what they don't tell you, though. I think that's probably one of the only perks that's, that's of college. Only, yeah. I was about to say, I think the that's one of the only perks of college is that you get to meet <laughs> great people. Then they'll, mm -hmm. you know, they'll get you jobs, and it really takes you a long, a long, a long, long way. Yeah. But that's about the only perks of it because you're going to be owing a lot of money, and then they ain't going to want to give you a job because they say you overqualified. <laughs> it's crazy. It's ridiculous. America is a crazy place. 
Entrepreneurship is where it's at. That's where it's at because it's like they're going to tell you to go and do this, but then they're going to tell you you don't have the experience. Well, I was at school, so I'm going to get the experience. <laughs> I, I don't know. Or they're like, yeah, well, you can intern for us. You can work for free for two years. See so, what I'm saying? I don't have time for that. Care. I need to be How making money. How the hell am I going to live off zero dollars? Zero dollars and zero cents. We gonna really be. I, I ain't gonna even to go there, noodles. you know, because you gotta buy clothes, you gotta get transportation. Like, no, it, it's I think the biggest the scam in the world. Of my life is bills. 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 Shit's a scam, man. Who you think came up with that? We need to find out, and we need to find out where his family at. <laughs> he or she. I mean, it's just it's just the way of the world. Like everything, it have to be a money flow. Mm -hmm. It's true. The users gotta pay. It's very much true. Not for real. <laughs> so how long have you been rapping? When, when did you first start? Um, so let me tell you. So I'm like, I'm an Aries, right? So I'm just mean sometimes. So when we were in high school, we used to make like little raps about people that we didn't like. So I was in like a clique with like 21 girls, right? Cause I went to a Catholic school. I went to all girls school. Um, so I'm in a clique with like 21 girls and, um, we, we had like a rival clique. And so I would make songs about them. Like, cause, and we'll put it on all our pages on, that's telling my age. You saying MySpace? My, <laughs> look, I'm telling my age. <laughs> on MySpace, we would all put it on our page cause you know, <laughs> we was all in each other top 10 or whatever, oh, yeah. top five or whatever. Well that top 10 would start <laughs> fights. Ooh, <laughs> if you're, let you not put your people in your top 10. <laughs> let you not put your people in your top 10. It was going down. It was going down, baby. You went to school Monday, they was going to question you about that. <laughs> what you mean? Who is this you got in your top top? you like, that's my cousin. Well, you don't be rocking with her like that. You be with me more than you be with her. It was serious about the top ten. Real shit. Real life. So it just started out like you guys were just dissing people. Just dissing people. <laughs> like, if I didn't like them, like, I would just diss them. Like, I would just make a song. Or, like, if their hair was messed up that day, we will make a song about it. We will beat on the chairs and we will make a song about it. And I, I just was like, fuck it. I used to be like a background dancer for a lot of different rappers from New Orleans and the surrounding mm -hmm. areas. And I wanted to come from back scene to the front scene. So I was like, fuck it. Um, definitely can't fucking sing because I sound like a horse nigga, but I can. I can't rap. No, so tell them how big you was when you first started out. Um, so when I first started out, I, was, I, I picked up traction really, really fast. People really liked me. I was doing a lot of shows. It was crazy. Hmm. It was crazy. We was doing mad numbers. Um, that's around the time when, what that, what that thing is, they just closed it down. Spinrilla. Not Spinrilla, the other one. That Piff. That Piff. That Piff was around. Hmm. And we was doing numbers on that Piff. And I worked with my nephew a lot then. Um, and we would just, like, my brother had a studio. If you watch New Orleans Exposed, my brother had a studio in the house. Um, so we got the studio back working, updated the equipment, and we would just all lock in and make music together. Drink oh, wow. Pink Moscato and make music together. <laughs> like, that was pink, her thing. That pink was like, Moscato. I don't know, it was like a blunt and Pink I Moscato. I just used to smoke. <laughs> and she used to record me and put me on Instagram because I'd go to sleep. You know, that was early Instagram days. <laughs> so yeah, we would just, you know, the, it was something about the Pink Moscato and the weed. I don't know, wine yeah. and weed. Maybe that's the combination. Hmm. Did you feel any pressure because your slim sister or in the beginning in the beginning it was a lot of pressure because of course i like to make the kind of music that i like to make i don't always i don't feel like i should be making music about shoot 'em up bang bang mm -hmm. because that's not my thing you know what i'm saying we come from the same places but i don't come from the same place as long as my brother has came there and from the same trenches that he's coming from like mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying when he was born my mama didn't have a lot. They were in a project. They was living that life. When I came along, you know, he walked to school. I drove to school because he made it that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He made sure we had so I didn't have to go without. So, you know, one of the proudest things that he was was when I went to Catholic school. He'll tell people, like, my, my sister not going to be like them other girls in the project. She, she, she go to Catholic school. She go to all girls school. He was proud of it. He was proud of it. He was like, the best girls come from the school she went to. Like, she going to be good in life because she, she go to this school. Yeah. So, you know, I just... I, that's why I'm always proud of him, you know, and who he is and why I always like to give back to him and celebrate him with pictures and videos of different things that he do because he was a great person mm -hmm. um, who should never be forgotten. No, absolutely. Absolutely.
How old were you when uh, he passed away? I was 15 years old uh, when my brother passed away. Okay. 15 years old. And we were all like preparing. Um, my mom is in the second line club. Hmm. Um, so they second line in November. So we were all preparing for the second line when they called and said that he wasn't with us anymore. Oh, wow. Well, they called and said that he'd been shot. But when we got there, because we went before my mom got there because we didn't want her to go first. Oh, really? They told us that, yeah, he wasn't with us no more. Hmm. How'd you react to that? I always tell people, I don't think I've ever truly accepted the fact that my brother was killed. Because I had to always be strong for my mama. I, I couldn't be sad because I got to be make sure she good, make sure she eat, make sure, you know, at the funeral, it's just you and them. It ain't no crowds of people like it's been for two weeks. It's you and them. And we will all, always find my mama like hiding somewhere crying. Like she'll get in the car, she'll go lay in the bed, his bed, and, you know, cry. So we will always have to find her. So that takes a lot. So, I, you know, I couldn't. I just had to live life, like move on with life. It's like you didn't have time to grieve. No, it's like I just hmm. I had to make sure she good. Yeah. And I think that's probably what a lot of kids around America are Ooh, dealing with. President in New Orleans. In New Orleans, really, really, really. Like, my mom was brought back because of a program that they had inside of a church that helped her, you know, with counseling. But a lot of these people, they don't have that. Hmm. They don't. That doesn't exist anymore. So how does a mom get back to her other kids if mentally she's not able to get it together? This was her child as well. Yeah. And it's a lot. It's a lot. That's understandable. But you got to yeah. love on your people. Pay attention to your people. Mm -hmm. uh, did that bring your family closer together or did it kind of break things apart? Or? I think it brought us closer together. I think it brought us closer together. It brought me and him closer together. I think it brought a lot of us closer together because my brother was really someone who impacted everyone's life in our family. He's touched everyone's life in our family. He's the first celebrity from our family. He's the first person to make it big. He's the first person we turned on the radio and you heard, my brother, <laughs> my brother. Don't play with my brother. Not for real. <laughs> Did he leave behind a lot of music that was unreleased as well? See, when it comes to that, it's like they say, but I'm not really sure. Um, I, heard, I heard some of it. It's not a lot. I heard, I heard it though. Do you know who has possession of it or who's in control of whether it gets released or not? Or? I mean, looking at it. Okay. Yeah, we just waiting. We, I want to make sure, we want to make sure that everything it's is a correct. Yeah. And, like music is different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's totally different. different. Like the game is totally different. Like. I'm, I'm like, I, I really be wondering, like, will it still sell? I know it'll stream, but what is a stream? You feel me? Mm -hmm. I want it to sell. I want to actually to go diamond, like, you know? So how do you set up, you know? Yeah, the business part of you know it. What I'm yeah. And it has to be, things have to be corrected. That's yeah. already that's wrong. already wrong. You know what I'm saying? And that's years of things that was already been wrong. Mm -hmm. So until then, for the people who always ask me, you gotta wait. <laughs> They're, they're forever going to ask. They're going to ask just... every... I'm like, look, I'm on my live. Don't come on my live, ask me about no soldier slim. This is G.I. Peach's live. <laughs> like, you came here for me. Yeah. But it'd be all cool. I, I still love y'all the same. What'd you guys think of that song Fredo dropped uh, with the, the hook from Slim? She, yeah. um, she had something to do with that. Okay. Yeah. It was, I think it was a, it's a cool song. Really? I like it. It's a nice song. Um, we really wanted something when they asked us, we really wanted something to bring him to the newer generation, um, to put him in front of the eyes, which they already know him anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll pay for it. It's one of those songs that's like contagious till and will forever be. It's like, it doesn't get old. That's the one that really should have took up. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I'll pay for it. I th right, I'll pay for it more than slow motion, I feel. I feel like I'll pay for it more than slow motion. It, but. it just didn't, it, it didn't pop for him. And like hearing them stories and then coming back to being here is like a revolving circle. 
Because you'll have hard songs, but they just don't pop for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like they say, you can't pick your hit. You can't pick you can't your hit. The fans got to pick every it. song that you time, like, they never like. They, yeah. They never like. It's like, I'm, I'm like, this song, this is my baby. <laughs> and then they'll pick a song that I absolutely <laughs> goddamn like. hate. Like, I was so about to toss this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even want to drop that song. <laughs> and that's the one that they blows up for you. Yes, all the time. I, I, the stuff you want to throw away. I kind of be dropping everything now. Like, yeah, because you never know. Well, you never know. You got to let them year, choose. I, I started just working with the producers I've been working with. I was just telling them, like, bro, when I record, I'm going to just drop it. Yeah. Because there ain't nothing but a push of a button, you know? Not real. Real life. Peaches, when would you say you really started taking music serious then? You know what? I'm going to be honest. I think I really started taking music serious like two years ago. And I've been doing music for way longer than mm -hmm. that. That's cap. She was serious. Well, I mean, you know what? I'm go. lying. Absolutely. She was serious, then she let it go. Absolutely. When I started off, I was serious, serious. I was into it. I was all in there, okay? I was ready. And then I had to do college, and then it's like, you know how life be happening. But I'm back serious again. I'm, I'm back into it again. I really, really love music. Um, I'm really not trying to cater to too much to what people are saying. I want to give them the music that is expressive of me. So I, that's what I plan on doing. Like, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. I don't care what's hot on TikTok. I love it because mm -hmm. it gives us more artists and it gives us more marketing technology for artists. So not knocking it at all. But I want to make the music that makes me feel good. And if it makes me feel good, it got to make other people feel good. Yeah. I feel like that's the whole point of music. It's that's your art. Music. It's my right. art. Right. It's my it's art. My you know, art. everybody paint, have a they critique. really paint from them, mm -hmm. from their head. You from their head. Yep. Even makeup artists, you're doing it from your head. You know, yep. all these people, all these artists, it's, it's your work that you've been expressive of. Yep. And so I'm, respect people's craft. Yeah. And unfortunately, <clears throat> people just get sucked up in the business part to where it's like, all right, this is what's popping. I need to go make that song. I got to go make that song. And that's like, why don't you make a TikTok song? I'm like, why do you want me to make another TikTok song? Why should I inspire for people to only know 15 minutes of my song? I made a seconds. whole... Oh, seconds. seconds. <laughs> Correction. Seconds. I've made a whole three minute and some song and people only know 15 seconds of it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want, I aspire a little bit more. Yeah. But I'm not mad at people that... It is a good thing. It's a good tool for a lot of artists, and it's given us a lot of different artists, and I love that. Oh, I love absolutely. TikTok. Yeah. I think it's a fun place. So I don't know how to work TikTok yet. Me neither. I can't, I can't get into it. They have a lot of funny videos. <laughs> I think Do you know how to make them, though? Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the part. I'm, I'm, like, still, look, I'm still in learning. I'm, I'm, I've learned how to do the timer and all that. It's, but it's just too tedious for me. I don't have time <laughs> to set up a camera, and then you got to keep redoing it. Like, yeah. that's just too much work for me. Like. Get it in the first take, or don't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. So break down your creative process when you're recording then. I have a creative process where I like to be in my zone when I'm making a song. So I play the beat that I want to work on. Um, and most of the time it's going to hit me like it's a euphoria like feeling. Hmm. So I feel it from down from my feet on up and it's like, that's the one. Keep going. And um, right in the car, in like 15 minutes, I put the first verse together. Hmm. It's crazy how Do you it like works. rap to the phone so you don't forget it or? So now I've been doing it where I rap it in the phone. Um, Cause if I write it down, it doesn't seem to translate the same because I wrote it. You can't get the cadence. Yeah, the cadence, it's not there. So I just record it on how I did it and then I save it. And then I have a studio at the house. So I go in there and I do a rough version of it and just keep okay. on listening to it. And that's why I make the hook, and then I make that second verse. Um, and then I go to the studio that I actually go to and I'll record it, because I got it by then. Gotcha. Got yeah. it by then. And what's your thoughts on the music scene in New Orleans right now today? I think, I think something is on the rise. I think we'll see BG is coming home. Free B. Free BG, it's like, they say, it's like days away. So we gonna have a lot of people who have eyes on the city and really looking at a lot of different artists from the city. Um, it's a lot of different genres, of course, we call it culture, that mm -hmm. comes from New Orleans. And it's like, we're going to give you some bounce. They're going to give you some hip hop. They're going to give you some R&B bounce. It's, it's a beautiful thing. So I think we're going to see a lot. Um, a lot of producers are now working with 
you know, people like Mandy Fresh are working with a new and fresher artist um, that's coming out. And I think um, the problem that we were having was unifying. And I think now we're moving past that and, and it's really, I think we're going to see a change. Yeah. I mean, I'm ready for it, though. Well, I'm ready. Absolutely. Because New York is like taking over right now. And I think, I think they need to let New Orleans play in this game, too. <laughs> you think New York taking over? I, New, New York pushing them out there. You listen to drill music? I don't, I don't, really, I don't really care for it. Because <laughs> that's mostly what's coming out of New York Yeah, right like, now. I don't really like it. Like, they make it for their area. Yeah. Right, you know, I don't really like it, but, I mean, it's raunchy, though. It's, it's, it gets the people going. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like that's, <laughs> what, that's what's taking over. It is. It's like, oh, yeah. I, like the Scarlet chick, the female. Okay. I, Scarlet. What was that? She's got this new song that's viral right now. Oh. Like, get the fuck out. It's like raunchy. And Busta Rhymes got on it. It's like they're making some raunchy <clears throat> shit. Like the chick Sexy Red. Sexy Red. Well, see, now you're going to get me started. So, <laughs> the started. problem that I'm having Don't with the started. industry when it comes to the female rappers is that why are we allowing the niggas to write so much music? Like, because people are upset and they say that they feel like female music is always about coochie, it's always about this, it's sexual. But the men are making it that way. You know what I'm saying? I know for a fact, I'm not, uh. I'm not 100% sure, but I just feel like a man wrote, my pussy pink, my booty whole brown. <laughs> I, just I don't know like, about that. I just feel like a man wrote that. Like, I feel like maybe party, party, part of some Fontaine. Shit. Like, he be making all the songs for Cardi B. He make all the shit for Cardi B, right? Part of some Fontaine. He, you know, he will suck through a straw. I could probably suck a watermelon through a straw. That nigga wrote that. That nigga wrote that shit. I could probably suck a watermelon through a straw. So you don't think a nigga wrote my pussy pink, my booty old, bro? No. <laughs> no. I bet your bottom dollar. Man, that's that a nigga wrote that part. Because that's some that's the some song is a rough song. Shit. Listen to the song, it's rough. Yeah, cause a nigga made it that rough. No. <laughs> We're going to have to ask Tay Keith, because he produced this song. So he I gotta, he I gotta probably go. the one that wrote that part. <laughs> Tay Keith, you wrote that? You dog, we man. need Sexy Red. I want Sexy Red to confirm, because I want to know. It's, I'm not even being shady. I just really legitimately want to know, like, did she come up with that part, or did a nigga come up with that part? Because I'm feeling like it was a nigga. Brother, ain't no nigga come up with that. All right. We need answers. <laughs> we need, that's what I'm about to say. That's just one of those things that we just going to have to wait to see. Watch. So you think the females are kind of being pushed to, for this sex image then? I feel like if the, if. What about Suki? Well, that's, Suki is Suki. Suki came out that way. Right. <laughs> Suki came, Suki writing that shit. That's, Su, that's her whole persona. Suki, Suki with the good coochie. That's her lane. Like nobody else can't even roll in look that lane. Who, look who, who she looked up to. Trina and Lil' Kim. You don't think Sexy Red looked up to them type of people? But Trina didn't write that stuff. Yeah. Like you teach me something every day. Yeah. You learn new things every day. Yeah, she, she had to, you know, a writer. Oh. So see what I'm saying? It's always like a writer. I might need to give me a writer. That sounds easy. <laughs> That's probably why the Just industry has been around. <laughs> That's probably why the industry has been around as long as it's been. Because imagine how... Like, just think about how we are with our music. Well, like, everybody, when you get to a certain point, you're going to have a writer because you have to cater to a certain demographic and market. I, so I've they're going to either there. write your hook or they're going to get you in with, like, like Lil Baby said with him and Offset came up, Offset cat up, came up with that, bitch, I'm Lil, when, 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 bitch, I'm Lil Baby. You're going to always have, like, a creative team. And they got to get credited because they did... You know, they offer some opinions, some concepts. Mm -hmm. So you I don't know. even like people in the studio talking to me. And I'm <laughs> so to you lie. don't think you don't think somebody was in the studio? They had a creative team with sexy race. Somebody say, "Bitch, yeah, my tell pussy them, yeah. pink, my booty," and it was a nigga. <laughs> well, I know they looked at that man like he was crazy. Then if he said, "Don't love it," it's gonna like, get the what? people going. I'm honestly in this generation, probably not. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's why I don't go to the studio with people. I go to the studio with me. But it, it is fun when it's like a creative team. Like one person with me. 
It is fun. It's fun because it's like it, it makes I it not as serious. Fun. It, it don't be, but see, for me, it don't. It, it take the work out of it. Well, for me, it make it a competition. Because I be in that plan and, and I be burning money. Oh, okay. You know how I be mm-hmm. in the studio. You burning money, you josing. You go ahead and say something. You been on record one song in three hours. I don't know what you're saying. I, I, I like creative teams because they get me going. I, I like to perform for people. See, I'm just a people person. You're right, though, because the I, best studio sessions I had was when we was recording. Yeah, because you know what? It was, it, was like, a, it was always a lot of us, like five people. Five people, people. and it's like, it, it makes me want to perform for them. It makes me want to give them the best verse that I could give them because they're going to be like, you right now, she, she, she didn't go home and do it. She did this shit right here and she ready. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. Like um, when I came out here um, and we went to the Outcast studio and it was like a whole group of us mm-hmm. and it was like, it was just a good feedback to feed off other people and see where they mind at. So I like, I like creative teams. So you just I just gotta have good vibes. You just, and that's what it's about, the vibes. Cause sometimes yeah. you could be in by yourself and you could create a funk for yourself because it's just you. It's just you. It's just you all the time. Um, and that's what I experienced at one point. When I did fall off, it was just like a funk. I got tired of doing the same thing. It's just me in the same place writing all the time. So I had to get out mm-hmm. and go see things. That's why I go work with producers. I be by Black and my, uh, my you, you just did Heartbeats. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I, I just dropped a single yesterday, me and Heartbeats. Okay. Yeah. Well, we recorded it Thursday, I dropped it yesterday. Yeah. Make sure y'all go You recorded it Thursday and dropped it Friday? It it's called... Um, Feel Me? Feel Me. Yeah. I was yeah. checking it out when you pulled up. <laughs> it's called Feel Me. Damn. Oh boy, I was yeah, wondering why you didn't have a video for it, but now I know we recorded it's recording that shit. <laughs> it's just so easy to put it out, you feel me? Yeah. And it was cool. Like, it was, it was fine. I, I like working with Heartbeats. You know I mean? yeah. he, a, he a good dude and he a great producer. Yeah, he's very hands on too. Yeah. Um, wh- what are we pushing right now, Peaches? Still bad bitches link up or? Oh, it's still bad bitches link up this week. This week. She said this week. <laughs> so <laughs> next week, week it might be something. Else. Next week it's gonna be something different. So I'm about to be working on actually the new project. Mm-hmm. I haven't decided what I want to title it just yet. Um, but I'm excited to show people what I have because they've been waiting on a project from me. They haven't gotten a project from it's me since the pandemic. Three years, right? It's been three whole That's years. Horrible. That is. You down bad. I am. And I was calling you. you <laughs> I am been down on bad. Ass. I was. Look, but I yeah, am down bad. Oh, I'd be running like, and I'd be gone. So I just call her and be asking her, like, "What's up? <laughs> you ain't rapping no more. You ain't dropping nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then you, I might not, I might not call and ask her no more about this for like a month. And then I'd be like, remember, I thought you was going to send me the song. I thought you was going to go. Man, don't even try to flex on me on, on, on our support. Because <laughs> you still got my single and you ain't never even had sent it back to me. So that's one of the reasons. Hey, you know what's crazy? Why? I recorded it. But it's at my house. And I ain't, I'm in Atlanta. I'm, I'm not in Houston. See what I'm saying? But niggas won't cap me on the camera. They ain't even send my, how I'm going to put a project if they don't want to give me my music back? See what I'm saying? Niggas toe up, bro. What song did you send them? So it's one of these tracks that I did. Uh, it's, it's a nice little joint. Um, I'm talking my together. shit. Hmm. I'm talking my shit, talking my shit, and the flows is magnificent. And um, I sent it to him because I thought it would be a good fit for him. And um, that was probably like a year ago, I think. No, it wasn't. I feel like it was, it was a year like ago. It was like seven months ago. <laughs> Close to a year, right? Last year. <laughs> you can say last year then. <laughs> and I ain't get it back yet. Okay? Okay. So what type of vibes should we expect on the project then? So, let me tell you. For Project Bobby, I gave y'all, we was in a pandemic, so I feel like we didn't need no serious stuff. We just needed to be having fun. But this one, I'm giving y'all all hard balls. All hard balls. Well, that's all I had, but I, the last couple of tracks that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make them fun. Cause I don't wanna just keep, you know, giving y'all the hard stuff. I want y'all to have some fun too. When you're in the car with your kids, you, I'm going to make something for that. Huh. Not the whole thing. You're going to have to just put that one separately because, you know, I'm going to be cursing on the rest of it. <laughs> go, go curse like a sailor. But I did good. I didn't curse in the first 30 minutes. I did good. Seconds. Seconds. Yep. I did good. I did good. <laughs> I, I get minutes and seconds mixed up. You got any kids, Peaches? I got one. Okay. I got one daughter. She'll be two in two weeks. Oh, wow. Nice. One daughter. That's it. I don't, I don't think I want no more either. <laughs> That's it. I think I'm gonna have a couple more kids. 
sitting by the ATP. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I like the kids, but uh -uh. they got to go to their parents. I like though, I like motherhood. I think it's one of the best hoods I've ever been from, motherhood. Like, I think the best hood I've ever been from is motherhood. Like, I love it. Uh, I didn't think I, I wanted I kids. I think you agree, Auntie, though. So, I, I knew you would be a great mom. Thank you. It's a big difference between Auntie and mom, though. It, it is. It it's is. a large transition. But, but I, 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 I was around her a lot. Yeah. Like, we was, I was with my Auntie. And we was young. You don't understand it. But we get it. You, you, you got to get it, my nephew, yeah. point blank. So how has motherhood changed your life these past two years? I care more about people. Like, I care more about people. It's not about me anymore. I felt like in the previous years, I was more of a selfish person. And I think the internet felt that same thing. You know what I'm saying? They felt mm -hmm. that same way. They was like, you know, you're doing this, you're saying that. You, that's being selfish to me. And I think in these last two years, I've grown a lot. Um, and I think about a lot of things that I do because it's not just living for me anymore. It's living for somebody else. And I would hate for her to have to suffer from things that I've said and that I've done. Cause she shouldn't have to. Yeah. I like that. That's why I stopped doing a lot of the stuff that I used to do. Oh yeah. Being a parent will definitely slow you down. Yeah. You grow up. I have you questioning it's some things before you Life is about <laughs> growing. You know, you got to grow up. Yep. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not as reckless as I was on the internet. I'm a little nice, <laughs> but don't, don't talk about, don't play with my brother. I was going to say, how do you deal with, like, online trolls? Because usually you clapping back at them. Ooh, bad, bad. I'm, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> y'all going to stop playing with me. I don't know what it is about me. <laughs> that y'all like to mess with me. I don't know what it, I, cause y'all know I'm gonna react. But y'all gonna stop playing with me. I don't, I don't wanna have beef with y'all. I don't wanna have no smoke with y'all. Just leave my brother out of your Magnolia stories and your Magnolia tales. Go, go, go tell it on the mountain. Pray about it. Pray about it. Some of us will always be blood. Some of us will always be alleged. So, and that's what it is. This November will be 20 years. 20! Could you believe it? I cannot believe it. It doesn't seem like 20 years. It doesn't. And I'm just a fan, so I... It does not. It does not seem like 20 years. I'm excited for this year, though. Do you guys have anything planned? I'm going to do... I'm doing a museum. A museum? We, really? I, I okay. told him we're going to get together more, that we should do the museum like Young Dolph has. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of personal items from my brother when it comes to, like, clothing, shoes, actual handwritten wraps. Hmm. Um, you know, just things of his that... Letters. Yep, from jail, like, just personal items, pictures and things from jail that we just want the people to get to experience. I feel like on a 20th year, they should get to experience him in a personal way, because they love him. If you're a fan of that's, someone for 20 years... That's what it, that's what it should be about. It, it should be about like, you getting that you payback. You getting to know him more personally, because a lot of people got this Michigan screw about, you know what I'm saying, he was American gangster. But they don't really understand like he was a great dude. All right. And then no, they just, good. a lot of people, they look for any kind of story online because they just want to know about him being their favorite artist. This new mm -hmm. online shit is weird. It is. There's so this many conspiracies. Weird. You know what I'm saying? It's weird. Like, weird. And people be crazy and they think they know you and then they be coming on your page talking crazy, girl, police. I pulled them up, okay? But anyway, they don't really know him, so they find these stories. They believe these stories because they just want a piece of their artist and they just want to know more about him because, of course, he wasn't with us long enough for them to know much about him. Yeah, and it was pre-social media age. Pre-social well. media age. So they just go through whatever story, they listen to whatever story that they hear. And I think with the museum, they'll get a personal side, like we said, of him. They'll get to see pictures from when he was in jail. You don't have to listen to what people say. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna show you a lot of different things, paintings that people have made, you know, posters that they had during that time, towels that they made for our pay for. T-shirts. So it's a lot of personal things that I asked my mom and we all agreed that we want to share with the fans because they are loyal fans. And we might release one song. Just one. <laughs> Just one. I'm there for the museum. Let me know. I'm pulling up. I'm telling you, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. I think we should do like black tie the first day. Dress up, come on out, support. I think that would be really really nice. But I'm excited. I can't wait to to people get to see the things that the 
the song, like the notebooks are gonna drive y'all crazy. Huh. Like the 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 this nigga would had legal no. pads, composition notebooks. You know what threw me off? The letters, like the stuff that he'll write and tell people. You know what I'm saying? Even like him just joking, just joking about other people, like the stuff that he'll be saying, and then to hear people's stories, and then to know stuff that he been unsaid in letters about people. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Nah, that'd be super dope right there. I, I'm making. It I think people are gonna turn out for that. Of course, it's 20 years later. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about everything for him, though. I'm excited that he's finally getting the recognition that he should be getting. Um, I know I'm glad. I know he's probably glad that we play the position in the recognition that he's getting by, you know, continuing on that legacy because that's what it's really always been. Um, about a lot that's of people. That's the only focus. Like that's right. the only reason we constantly push that. Like they, they'll say it was a, a wave ride, but why we gotta ride our own wave? Like it don't make sense. Like you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. That, you guys are the legacy. We are the we people. Are the like legacy. we are the people <laughs> of these people. We don't have to ride a wave of somebody who we are kin to. If anything, you know, we just try to keep for for me and I know for him and for my mom. All we are doing is just trying to keep somebody's love that they loved alive for them. Like mm -hmm. nobody should die and everything have they, they everything die with, die yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. Like this man love was music. This man died for music. music, really. Like he died for music. And it's like I would feel terrible to leave this earth and have everything that he worked hard for. This boy been working since he was like 12 years old on music. Like in it has to keep going. Yeah. It has to. Like I, I, I can't stop. I know they're not gonna stop, and then the kids not gonna stop. It's gonna be there in your face. So I'm always proud of everything that he does. From even though we didn't care for the TV show too much, that still was something about him that made people want to know more about him. Made people stream his music more. Mm -hmm. I kind of think I want to start putting a, a real documentary together. You know, so people can actually talk about great times that they had with him. Oh, yeah. There's all these murder stories and kidnappings mm -hmm. and armed robberies. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like people be throwing indictments on the table. That's funny. But, um, just keeping it G, if it was a person that was alive, it'd be. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Nah, that'd be really dope there, too. Yeah. Yeah, we got some love footage. We, keep, we got some stuff for y'all. But not just get like fact, I got a whole interview that he did. Oh, somebody sent it to you? Yeah. Oh, wow. I told you they got that other one, too. And they got the ones at the house. Matter of fact, I think it is. I think you got a copy of it, too. Oh. It's going down. Like an unreleased interview? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. There's a lot of unreleased footage that we get now. But we the whole the interview, he in, a, he in the back of a limousine just talking, just running it, just huh. josting. You feel me? Enjoying life, getting high, right. it just happened. Yeah. Y'all gonna love it. Y'all gonna love these new ones. People like do y'all gonna. I'm telling you, y'all gonna, cause it it really shows who he is. Yeah. And how he was as a person. Mm -hmm. All people hear is the all that right, right. The shit. yeah, you know the the gangsterism. That man changed a lot of people's lives. Fact. Like the stories that they tell you, I've never met a person that didn't come up to me and had a story with yeah. this man. The main person whose story I kind of want people to hear is the real one. Right, because he impacted he his really life a lot. He really changed dude's life. Mm -hmm. He was a kid, and he just grabbed him like, I got you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to take care of you. Bought him clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the Rowan situation was fucked up. He yeah. was, his family situation was fucked up. Mm -hmm. So for people to, you know, let you come in with them and live with them and not ask you for anything. Yeah. Just want to make sure you can express your gifts and your talents. And, and dude was cold. He was a good cool. uh, yeah. He was a good one though. I I remember many a times like I asked him for some money, like he'll be down to his last. He and you'll know when he's down to his last because he don't he wouldn't come outside. He would be wrapped up in a cover in a bed, <laughs> like with the cover over his head, because he didn't, you know, he didn't want to go outside if he didn't have money. And I'd be like, you know, I went to him, I was like, hey, hey I want to get some tennis shoes. Can you buy me some tennis shoes? He was like, Look, I don't got all of it, but this is my last seventy five. Take it and go get what you want. Like, go get what you want. Go, go get the shoes you want. Like, tell mama to put the rest with it, but take what I got. Like, so I, I, I get how people feel, and I get when they want to tell those stories. But make sure you also tell about mm -hmm. the good stuff 
uh, that this man has done because he does a lot of great things, did a lot of great things for a lot of people that make them love him the way they love them. It's not just right. the music. Yeah. It's him. It's him. It was him. From jail to... That's why, that's why they got people like Boss Man who just so passionate about Soldier Slim. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And this was just somebody that he clicked up with in jail. Mm. You know? Yeah. It seemed like yeah. anybody who he impacted, their lives changed when he left. Everybody. And that's when someone has a large impact on people. Yeah. Yeah, so, those are the stories we need to hear. Yeah, see? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We can't be hearing all that other stuff. That's... We, we've heard all of that already, too. It's just oh, the same story being retold. Like, and then they're going to add a people. couple new features to it. Yeah. Like, come on now. No, that's real. Yeah, so we're going to work on that, dude. We probably, you know what? We should play a clip, one of those clips at the thing. Yeah. At the museum. Let it play at the museum. That'd be dope. That would. They would love yeah. it. I know y'all going to love it. I'm going to make the museum happen. I'm making it happen. <laughs> All right, guys, go ahead and plug your social media so everyone knows where to find you so they can, you know, stay up to date with all the museum and everything and all the music. So it's not like I got to tell you who I am, <laughs> but I am G.I. underscore Peaches with a Z. If you're looking for me on um, Instagram, it's D.A. Project Barbie spelled out. And I'm on iTunes, Spotify, all that. Stream my music, too. When y'all talking that shit about me, stream my music because y'all be in that comments. <laughs> Talking that shit, but make sure when you're talking that shit, you're streaming my music. Period. I'm about to start posting more on YouTube, so just subscribe to my YouTube. Let's so just slim. Because Instagram, I don't know, like four pages. I keep getting them yeah, building you them You and up. me both, man. <laughs> like, that's funny. Like, you, you on keep our taking fifth But you know, they let the people, the fake pages, they let them yeah. stay around for a long time. The last time we got deleted, like four fake pages popped up. <laughs> they just let them stay around. They like, were like, scamming crazy. folks. People were sending them money. I was oh, like, wow. oh, Lord. It but they bad. never take them down. No. <laughs> Crazy. Mm -mm. Ridiculous. All right, you guys got any shout outs you'd like to give before we wrap it up? I only want to shout out my mother, Miss Linda Tapp, um, who's been holding it down as well. Because we are, I guess none of us would be in existence without her. <laughs> and that's her son, uh, Soldier Slim. So all I do is just respect her wishes. And um, make sure you go to the Soldier Slim collection because that's oh, yeah. where we sell these dope outfits at. You and a lot of Soldier some Slim. Fire on there Ooh, too. some fire! We're gonna have to send. I'm gonna have to send you some stuff. Please do. I, I promise, no charge. I got you. Please do. Yeah. I don't want to shout nobody out. Shout me out. Shout out, <laughs> shout out, shout out my dog. Shout out my auntie. Cause this is our interview. I just came along. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't want to shout nobody out. There it is. When bad bitches link up, we drank it, got some egos out the bottle. Walk in the club, we looking like some models, so that ass he had to follow. You buy your one, you buy me one too.